I walked up the pathway to my bungalow. I remembered another expedition. It wasn't quite as warm as Panama. Point Hope, Alaska. It lies some 130 miles above the Arctic Circle, 400 miles closer to Siberia than to Fairbanks. I went there in June 1967 to hunt the great white polar bear with bow and arrow. We flew in during a break in the weather. Down below I saw the fissure in the ice where the Eskimos hunted their whales. For some reason, the whales always return to this one spot in the spring of the year to feed and reproduce. And it was there the Eskimo hunters waited for them. Point Hope. Population 350. Established? Date unknown. There, the Eskimos' graves are marked with Russian Orthodox crosses. The gravestones themselves were made from walrus tusks and whale bones. Soviet influence was quite evident here in the most northern state of the Union. Just like all children all around the world, the kids play and hoop it up. My hosts were Lee and Irma Holen. Lee operated a hunting camp at Point Hope. He's a superb pilot and professional hunter. He's also one of the best fishing guides around during the summer and early fall. Lee's cabin at Point Hope wasn't fancy, but it was warm and comfortable, serving both as his home and his workshop. As always, I began practicing almost as soon as I arrived. Because of my heavy clothing, I had to adapt my bow pull to a 26-inch draw rather than the normal 28-inch. My arrows are black to see them better against the snow. But otherwise, they were no different from what I'd used back in Africa. Temperatures dipped to 20 and 30 below at night got up to no more than 10 below during the day. I was quite anxious to get on with the hunt, as this was my first major outing since the Elephant Expedition of 1957, 10 years ago. We decided to forego the local method of transportation, dog sled, and utilize our Piper Super Cubs, and search for polar bear tracks from the air. went out in two separate crafts as a safety measure. Piled up ice, crevices, jagged peaks make landings down on that ice floe extremely difficult. In case one plane damages its landing gear, each plane carries with it an extra landing gear V-strut. One plane has the left V, the other plane has the right V strut. It provided us with some insurance, assuming that both planes didn't pile up on the ice together. We scouted hundreds of square miles from the air before we spotted fresh tracks. Although today the polar bear is a restricted hunting animal, Back in 1967, they were still fair game. There he is. We picked a spot and put down quickly.
For the moment, the bear disappeared into the white background. Our escort dipped by to see we were all right. We followed the tracks until they were very fresh. We knew we were close. Then, there he was. He spotted us and lumbered over to investigate. didn't keep on coming over the top of that flow, nobody knows. I took an excited shot at him and missed. We silently started after him, trying to outmaneuver that keen-sensed hunter. Once more, he came back to us, almost daring me to shoot. I drew, aimed and fired. A long shot, nearly 40 yards, but accurate enough. tracked him and soon found him down. He had been a dangerous adversary, close enough to kill any one of us, but then he changed his mind. We took the pelt back to camp and made ready to return home. Truly one of the most heightened moments of my life be face to face with an animal that could have easily killed me. Fascinating.